thought you were making shortbread. I am making shortbread. What, with raisins right and sultanas? Yeah. No. I'm making shortbread. Don't worry, I make shortbread. I'm just making, I'm soaking some fruit for a tea bread, like a barra brick, a sort of a, a Welsh kind of thing. I've just seen these prunes are a year out of date. Do you think they'll be all right? Just dry fruit. There's no mould on them or anything. They're preserved. Oh well, it'll be fine. I've got raisins in here. I've got 200, 400 grams of fruit altogether, so it's a mix of fruit. I haven't got any currants, but I've got raisins, sultanas and prunes, which are out of date by year. So I thought what I would do is just measure that all together, 400 grams, for my tea bread. And there's probably a bit hard, oh, those ones. There'll be a few in here, though, fine. I've just got to take, I've got about a couple more to do. Oh, that was all right. A couple more to do just to take it up to the 400 grams. And then what I'm going to do, John, do you want to know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I am going to steep this fruit in sugar and tea overnight and let it all soak up all those lovely flavours. Do you know, I'm getting, getting to the bottom of the pile here of good ones. There you go. All right. So you get some sugar, you want dark brown muscovado sugar, okay? And you want to have um, precisely 100 grams, okay? So put that in as well. So what have I done so far, John? Have you been paying attention? No, because it's not shortbread. <laughs> coming, your shortbread's coming. Um, so 100 grams of sugar goes on to 400 grams of mixed fruit, okay? I've got some lovely tea bags in there, a bit of twinings. Get twinings tea or Yorkshire. Anything nice and strong. Pete, whatever tea you prefer, really. If you want to be all fancy pants, you could put in um, Earl Grey tea. But as I don't like Earl Grey your tea, you're not getting it. Could you use fruit tea? As long as it was a pure fruit tea. Because sometimes fruit teas are just flavoured teas, and I don't think as, they have these flavour bombs in them, which are slightly artificial. So I would go with just plain. That would be all right. So it's 300 millilitres, or half a pint, of this tea that goes in, okay? And then all you do, you mix it all together, and then you leave it overnight. So you're going to have to come back and do a second little film of me just taking this out of the oven. I don't know how we'll do it. It'll probably have me taking it out of the oven with another film that we do tomorrow, because I think tomorrow I might do a pork dish. So we'd have a pork dish and this as the result. Right, so now I'm going to leave that alone, get rid of my rancid prunes, and you can come back and I'll be ready for my shortbread. Can I use some of your unsalted butter? You may, even though it's in a cheese dish. Well, it is for your shortbread, so I thought you'd be happy. Yeah. It is in a cheese dish, but you see, we have unsalted. So, ladies and gentlemen, John likes unsalted, I like salted. You see, so we have the compromise of the two butter dishes now, because it keeps him happy. I have to keep him happy. My mum used to call unsalted butter French butter. Yeah, well, that's very true. I don't know why, probably because the French use a lot more unsalted butter than we do. They've got class. <laughs> Just, I love the salt in butter. Oh, it just makes it. For me, it's just, anyway, great for baking. Good for pastry because it stays firmer than salted butter. So it's very good for baking pastry. Okay, shortbread. Now, I, I dug out my old Winkfield file. So I'm doing an old recipe from 1980 something or other, probably. Wow, that's old. No, it's very old. It's when I was training 84, 85. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we had this file with all these lovely recipes and that's where I got my coronation chicken from, the original recipe, which is another video I've done. But this is their shortbread, so I thought I'm gonna go with this one because it's been a little while and I'm going to do some lemons in it. I've got 150 grams of softened butter, which you might have to come back with because I can't beat this in because I've got a dodgy shoulder. So 150 grams off that. Actually, that's not too stingy, is it? And the thing, oh, 146, the thing about shortbread it should have proper butter in it it should taste buttery it should be really buttery soft and sandy textured and light and crunchy and just melt in the mouth all of those things that's what it should be so just need one more gram of that in there and then we're going to put three ounces of the cast sugar or 75 grams in here and then i'm going to grate some lemon in and cream it down okay um until it's smooth before we introduce the flour. 
that nicely softened for you. That is absolutely perfect. Perfect. Yeah, me and my friend the microwave did that. <laughs> did you soften it? Make it a lot, yeah. It makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Thank you. Thank you for doing that. It's much appreciated. I grated a lemon in the meantime. So it's sort of possessed of a whole lemon, a whole one. Now, we're going to be doing quite a few videos this week, aren't we? Quite a few films. Do you know why we're going to do quite a few films? Because we were supposed to be in Wales for three days, glamping with a hot tub, on the beach a lot with the dog, in sunny Gower. Like lockdown yesterday. Lockdown, John. But you know what? It doesn't matter because we have to keep safe, don't we? It's yeah. fine. It's no. fine. And people are in far worse positions than Absolutely. that. But, you know, that's why. But you're lucky now, you see, so we're going to get to do lots of films. And lots of eating, that. <laughs> and lots of eating and cake. <laughs> lots of cake. All right, so I've added the lemon to that, so that's beautifully mixed, sweetheart. Thank you so much for that. That is wonderful. Now, we add flour to it. We don't just add plain, we add rice flour. Rice flour is coarse textured and it just gives it a lovely crunch and makes it shorter and, and a more of the sandy texture that I was saying to you. So we have all together, it's supposed to be sifted, but I'm not doing that. Um, 150 grams of plain flour goes in. Okay. 150 plain. Okay, nearly there, nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. It's a bit of jeopardy. I'm there, I'm there, almost there. No, nearly, nearly there. Right. And then three ounces, or 75 grams, off the rice flour, which is here, which I believe is still in date. So that's okay. So 75 grams of this. You could use um, like a semolina if you wanted to. That's that is okay. Got packing to tape on it. Oh well, that's because um, it was in the cupboard before we moved, and I didn't want to throw it away. And it was a bit a bit knackered. It was kind of open like that, so I just got a bit of packing tape and stuck it down. That's why. Right. So now I'm just going to mix all this together nicely. Nicely does it. I not to get flour down my front. I'm in a jumper today for the first time in ages. It's been quite nippy today, hasn't it? See, today would have been the first day of Tame Food Festival, which is at the end of September every year. It's two days. And um, normally we would be, right now, um, running around, wouldn't we? Running around like nutters, because um, <laughs> there's thousands of people there and just keeping it all organized, all the wonderful people that help with us and everything, but we're not. And it's beautiful weather out there for a food festival. And last year, it wasn't very nice weather. It was quite challenging and it rained and it was very windy. Um, so this year I was hoping for hurricane and pestilence. Didn't happen. <laughs> it's quite windy and chilly though. It's windy and chilly, but it's sunny and it's lovely for a food festival, but it's sunshine, isn't it? I mean, you know, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It wasn't to be, it wasn't to be. And we have shortbread, as I, you know, we've got lovely things, lovely things to eat instead. Um, I also, just after I put this in the oven, I just want to have a little bit of a shout out for somebody today, if that's okay, John. Is that all right? Yeah. My lovely friend, Ozzy Lala. <laughs> it's called Tay Food Festival, it reminds me. That's how we first met him, and I want to talk to him a little bit about him and his yeah. wonderful product. Flan tin, no, cake tin, loose bottomed, and a little bit of grease proof at the bottom of it, okay? So squidge all this together with your hand. Get it in, make sure obviously your hands are nice and clean. Oh, it just feels so lovely and light, this. And the smell of that lemon on here is just gorgeous. Blooming lovely. Pop it in there. And then just flatten it down with the palm of your hand all the way into the cake tin. Am I putting it that way then? <laughs> yes. I hate that cupboard. Look, it's a different cake tin. Right, that was too big. That was too big, that's the right size. That's loose bottom, that isn't. But it'll be fine because I put grease proof at the bottom of it. It's all gonna be fine. It's all gonna be lovely. It'll all pull out and it'll be fine. 
um, it's just I had it, it's supposed to be about between half and one inch thick and it wasn't in that one. So I've changed it. Right, so now what you do um, is just mark it. I'm gonna mark it into some little eighths. Okay. And then I like to decorate it around the edges like that, just using the knife. Hopefully this will stay once it's been cooked. So shop bought shortbread. Yes. You see lots of like holes. Yes, that's what's gonna happen in just a second with my fork. Okay. So this is just around the edge. You know the when you buy it it's what's it called? Petticoat tail, isn't it? It's petticoat tail that's what they call it. Anyway, that's what these shapes are. I think it's petticoat tail, someone will tell me. So we just do the little Looks like that, and then what you do, according to this recipe, Le Cordon Bleu recipe, uh, dust with caster sugar and then cook. So you've got a little bit left over of the caster sugar, and we're just going to sprinkle that over the top, and pop it into the oven, it's a 190 oven, okay, um, for 15 to 20 minutes. Be done, and then you can have a nice cup of tea, can't you? And a piece of shortbread. I can do a bit of crochet and we can watch a film. Um, we can edit this. Oh, we'll edit this and then we'll watch a film. Because mm. it'd just be nice to sit down. It's Saturday, isn't it? I've had a very busy week because I've spent the whole week cooking for my lovely daughter who's about to have a baby. So I've been down there cooking every day. So it'd be quite nice just to sit down with a film and have a bit of crochet. Put that in the oven, come back. It could be lovely and golden brown, gorgeous, and yummy. While that shortbread's in the oven, I've got to tell you about Ozzy Lala. So there's this wonderful chap called Ozzy and he three or four years ago applied to Tame Food Festival for a hot food stand for his Levantine food. And when we tasted his food, we said absolutely yes, because you have to bring a sample. And what he put on most of his food was this, it was his own amber sauce. It's a mango, spiced mango sauce, very intensely flavored, very fresh, very wonderful. And it went down a storm. So a couple of years ago, we started a bursary at Tame Food Festival, um, which would give a thousand pounds to a producer um, to help them, you know, in some way with their business. And the first year we did a, a lovely lady called Lisa, who amazing cake company. And then Ozzy applied and we gave it to him. We gave him the bursary because what he wanted to do was develop that sauce into what you see today, a sauce that can go onto a shelf and be sold in shops. Anyway, He's developed it. And this year, this won two stars on Great Taste Awards. His um, Scotch one won one star. I mean, that's how far he's come. And that's because um, of hard work and just being completely wonderful and brilliant at what he does. So not only does he have these sauces, he has some spices as well. He has his own spice range and they're all happening and they're all happening now. And he sent me these and I said, I'm gonna tell everyone about you because you are brilliant, Ozzy Lala, and your produce is fantastic. So please, if you can, buy this. Just get some sent to you because it will change the way you think about Levantine food. It is so wonderful. And certainly this amber sauce you can use to marinate and you can cook with it. It's brilliant, and so is he. Right, shortbread. Out of the oven, okay? I let it cool in the tin, and then I flipped it and flipped it so it was on this um, wire rack. And I made a very quick icing with um, the leftover lemon juice and a little bit of um, a little bit of zest in there and icing sugar. And then all I've done, I'll just put this one aside very quickly, is drizzle. I thought it'd be quite nice to have a bit of a drizzle. So I'm just drizzling that across the top. Not too much because obviously it's got a lot of sugar in it anyway. But it just gives it that extra little bit of um, zesty loveliness. Right, I'll go back. That's more it. like it than the silly nonsense of raisins and tea and... But you have tomorrow and you'll love. Mm, this is so good. So is this for me? Mm-hmm. Well, you can have that little bit there. I'll have the rest. Amazing. But that lemon icing just made it, you know, it's just lifted it and just giving it a real citrus thing. I mean, it's all melt in the mouth and soft and short. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm -hmm.